belongs to God. Today is a very unique day. Uh, honestly, something that we've never done before uh, since I've been at Midway Church, and I'm really excited about it. I'm excited that we get to do this as a family. It's gonna be a unique prayer day. 
Uh, so as we jump into this new year, we just believe that um, when you encounter Christ, you never leave the same, right? Whether that's reading the Word or spending time with Him in prayer. And so that's what we're gonna do this morning. It's gonna be very unique. Uh, we obviously have like the whole fam in the room. So just wanna give you an option. Our, our kids tend to be a little more Pentecostal than us, and that is okay. Uh, we love that. If you are uncomfortable with that, we have a space in the gym. Y'all can go over there at any point. Again, we're fine with them being in the room. We love it. This is a family service. But if you want to step over in the gym, we got screen sound and coffee. And so everything is over there if you just want to step out. And uh, we just want you to be a part of today. So don't let that hinder you. Kids, love that you're in the room. Be yourself today. Worship freely. It's going to be incredible. Everybody feeling okay? Awesome. Well, Happy New Year to you. Looking forward to doing this together today through prayer. And uh, I truly believe God's gonna do some amazing things. Uh, but before we jump to that, something we always love to do is just make sure that everyone's been acknowledged this morning and smiled too. So let's be a friendly church for just a couple minutes here. Say hello to somebody near you. Let's go. Well, Happy New Year, Midway Church. Y'all are excited to be here today, aren't you? I love it. This is awesome. Let's give God some praise today if you're glad to be here. If you're excited about a new year, what God has done, we look back and we're grateful, but we look ahead. You can have a seat for just a moment. I want to set today up with you. I want to tell you Happy New Year. I'm going to tell you what today is. You're, you're saying, why are we here? What are we doing? What's different? What's the going on with all the prayer moments that we've got today? Kids are in the room. Hey, kids. Good to see you guys. We got our gym overflow. We got our kids area over there, family area. Everybody wave at the family over there. Yeah, good to see you guys. Online, we know many of you are tuning in. You're traveling, you're watching. We are so glad. We've got a great, big, amazing church family. But I wanna tell you what today is right off the bat. Today is a day where we look at sowing and reaping. There is this myriad of emotion at the end of a year as we go to the next year. We're sad about things that we wish would have been different as we look back. We're glad about the blessings of God as we look back. We're a little fearful. We're feeling the tension point of excitement and joy and anticipation about what next year may hold. But at the same time, a little bit of fear grips us. And I think the best way we can go about that is to center ourselves on Jesus. Today is a day of planting. It's a prayer service where we're not just asking God, hopefully, maybe, kind of, sort of, will you put your hand on my life this next year? We are believing God for great things and we are planting and we're sowing spiritually for what will be the best year ever as we follow Jesus, no matter what comes our way. That's what today's all about. And I want you to know that God sees you where you're at. I listen, I, I met a lot of guests today. This is a great day for you to come join us. It's unique. It's a little different than anything we've ever done, but I think it's a great chance for you to see who we are as a church. We believe in prayer. And I'm gonna tell you why. And I'm gonna start by telling you this, that today we want you to just take a breath and relax. Can we do that for a second? Just not that COVID friendly for sure, but man, that feels good, doesn't it? We needed that. Today is a day of freedom. And I'm gonna set today up, I'm gonna give you the why, and then I'm gonna give you the what, and we're gonna have some prayer focuses as we go through today. So I, this year, felt a stirring of the Lord as I watched different movements of God happen around the world, many of which were here in our own midst. It's been an amazing year, church. God's, it's been a record year in the history of Midway Church. But as I've looked at how God has moved and touched lives and changed things and these big moves of God, I just started looking at where I saw those things happening and saying, God, show me the common 
common denominator. Show me the ingredients that are present every time there's this big move of God. That was just a journey I went on this year. And through that journey, God showed me a lot of things, but one thing stood out above everything else that was always a foundational presence at every big move of God, and it's prayer. Now, I'm gonna be real with you. Can I be vulnerable for just a minute? As a pastor, some of y'all said yes. I think that is a yes, we're going with it. I'm gonna tell you in my own journey, there's been many seasons where prayer has felt pointless. Some of y'all are like, I don't know how I feel about having a pastor who said that. But I'm gonna tell you, there's times where I look and it's like, well, God's not gonna change. He, he already knows. I'll just take whatever comes my way. Maybe that's you. But I've learned I've missed out on so much in all those seasons of my life. I've missed on the real purpose of prayer. When prayer has felt pointless in my life, God always pointed me back to the purpose of prayer. Write it down. If you wanna write it down, a good definition for us today is this. Prayer, prayer is not about changing God. It's about changing me. Prayer changes things, don't get me wrong. God, man, he reacts to prayer, but does he already know and is he set? People get so caught up in all those questions and it becomes this spiral thing. Here's what God wants you to know about prayer is that he wants to change you. Even if your circumstances don't change, God wants to change us as we pray, as we connect with our creator today. God's shown me that over and over again in my own life. He's shown me as I've looked this year at these moves of God in our own church and around the world. And I want this to be a time where we cry out to our God, not just to thank him for what was, but to plant and sow for what will be, for the changes God wants to bring about in us. We often say things like, new year, new me. I got news for you, and this is the bad news part. 23 to 24 is just a number. It's not gonna change anything. It's just a date on the calendar. It's a great time to evaluate, and that's why we're here. It's why we plant, that's why we so, but it's just a number. You know what's not just a number? Prayer. The change that God brings about in our heart. I say to you, new prayer life, new me. It'll change me. People often ask, is Midway Church a discipleship church or an evangelism kind of church? You know what my answer is if you know me. What is my answer? One, two, three. Yes. It's both. The same thing people say is Midway Church, a, a, a truth church, a word church, or a spirit church. My answer is the same. Yes, we need the truth of God's word. We need the word of God. We stand on it unapologetically, but we need the hand of God, the moving of the spirit of God through the people of God as we encounter the word of God all to come together if we want to see revival as a church. And God is doing something special in our midst. And this is a moment where we plant and sow into that. Next, Sunday, we're starting a series. You want to read ahead? Acts chapters number one through 12 is where we'll be. Acts one through 12. For 12 weeks, we're going to do a series focused on the reach. The reach. That was our vision day theme. And we thought instead of making it just a vision that we talk about sporadically, let's give a focus to start the year on the reach. And we're going to look at how the church grew from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria in the first 12 chapters of the book of Acts, and then it goes on missionary journeys to touch all the way around the world. So we're gonna focus on the reach of the church, but there's a threefold collision in those 12 chapters as we read in the book of Acts. The first thing we see is the church prays. The people of God pray. Acts chapter four, verse 24 says, they raise their voices together in prayer to God. They said, sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. So the people of God pray. The second part of that collision is that the spirit of God shakes up the church, the people of God. Acts chapter four, verse 33 says, with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. The people of God pray. The spirit of God shakes up the church, the people of God. And then the people of God shake up the world. Look at Acts 2, 47 that captures this picture. It says they were praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Church, when I look back at this year, I'm so thankful. God has moved in our midst in mighty ways. Through the hard times, through the good times, in a record year for our church, 
God is so good. But guess what? He's only just begun. And so we're here to plead, to beg God for all that he has for our life to plant into our own spiritual journey so that corporately it spreads out and does exactly what those three things are. The people of God pray, the spirit of God shakes us up as his people so that we go and we shake up the world with the gospel, the good news of Jesus. That's why we're here today. Now let me tell you about the what, that's why. The what behind this is, let me give you three challenges today. Cry out to God, number one, the way that Jesus did. Hebrews chapter five, verse seven, describes the prayer life of Jesus. It says, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears. You notice how Jesus prayed? It was, it's more like labor and delivery <laughs> than a receiving of a great gift. It was a heartfelt cry from the depths of his pain, his soul, his heart. That's where God challenges us to be. With tears, he prayed to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. I love that verse. Great model for us as we pray today. Number two, allow God to work in you before you even ask him to do something around you. God will always do something in us before he does something through us. So listen for what the Lord says. And that's number three. There are going to be clear prayer prompts on the screen, screens. I'll show you that in a moment to help you pray no matter where you're at in your spiritual journey. But listen to God even when you don't know what you ought to pray. Pray with the model of Jesus. Ask God to do something in you first so that he can then do something around you and through you and listen as much as you pray and speak to be heard. Here's what we read in Romans chapter eight. Maybe you don't know what to even pray for. Romans chapter eight, verse 26 says, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. If you don't know what to pray for, just listen to the Lord and say, God, I don't know what to pray, but here I am. Now, let me tell you about some logistics here. The altar is open. Now, where's the altar? A lot of times people will make this an altar. An altar can be wherever you make it. You're in the gym right now, you're at home. Right now, go to the corners. In the room, you can be your seat, it could be the aisles. You can get up and move around. You can stand, you can sit. This is a, a service built on freedom for you to experience God, different than what we've done before. So I challenge you to embrace that. The altar is open. You may be here as I come back up. I'm gonna keep things moving, but that doesn't mean you stop the Spirit of God from moving in you. If you need to stay and pray, you keep praying. We'll have a moment where you'll be able to be prayed for by some of our leaders that are gonna spread throughout the room. The same thing in the gym. We created this for freedom. Get on your knees at your seat. Get on your knees at an altar, here, there, anywhere. Sit in silence, wherever you may be. Here's what I tell you. Whether you have a bunch of prayer experience and background, a bunch of church experience and church background, or you have none, here's one of four ways you can encounter God in today's service. Number one, you can just be still in solitude and pray. You can simply observe if you want to in that stillness. That's number one. Just be still right where you're at and observe the people of God encountering the Spirit of God. Maybe you'll feel led to pray at some point in that as well, to pray or observe silently. Number two, you can come to an altar or make an altar wherever you're at and pray. You can pray out loud. You can pray standing up. You can pray sitting down. You can pray on your knees. You can pray silently. I challenge some of you, pray out loud. To hear the voices of God's people praying together is a powerful thing. So let's do that together. Be still in solitude. You can come to the altar. You can pray in your seats in an aisle. You can pray by yourself if you want to. You can pray with your family. You can pray over your children, with your children. You can pray in your life groups if you'd like to. Or you can also, number four, just sing and worship. So here's what I'll do. I'll set up prayer prompts and then we'll start praying. The worship team's gonna lead us in a song. Then I'll come up, set the next song, the next prayer prompt up. We'll have prompts on the screen so that if you don't know what to pray, we've got some ways you can pray in these specific areas. But before we do those four prayer prompts, here's what I'd like to do. Let's thank God for a moment. Just bow your heads and close your eyes. The Bible reminds us and says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Before we ask God for any, anything at all in 2024, let's thank him for his faithfulness in 2023. We do that right now. Just thank God. God, we thank you for what has been as we look to what will be. You're good, you're faithful, even when life is not, we thank you, God. Now, as our heads are bowed, eyes are closed, be still for a moment 
God's word says, be still and know that I am God. Let this be a time of stillness for repentance and reflection. Repentance is where I turn from the me way of doing things and I turn to God in his way. I turn to him above everything else. And I reflect on how good God is, how able he is. God, you're good. We reflect, we repent, we turn our hearts to you and fully towards you. We know that you're the way, the truth, and the life. We know that you're able. God, we know today we come with open hands and open hearts, open ears, open minds, thanking you for what you have done. But God, we plant and sow and ask you for what you will do as a church. We know we need your hand on our life and on our church above everything else. So today, as I set up the first prayer prompt, may it be a special time for us as a church in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Let me set up our first prayer prompt. And this is a time where you can stand, be seated, move around however you want to in this moment. But first of all, let's pray for the lost. I ask you this question often, who is far from God, but close to you? Now, I recognize some of you hear that and it's like, well, I don't know if I know Jesus. We're gonna have an opportunity for you to know him today. He's ready to meet you even as we pray for you. Maybe it's time for you to ask him to be your Lord, Master and Savior, but maybe go through your phone contacts during this moment and look for people. Maybe ask God, who is it that needs me to be Jesus in their life? Who is far from God, but they're close to you? Let's take a moment right now, as however you want. The altar's open, you can spread out. Will you pray? for those who don't know Jesus in your life and for you to be the hands and feet of Jesus as we pray. Do that right now.
these moments. God, the names that you put on our heart, we lift them up to you, that they would do what the song says. Know that forgiveness is purchased. It's done. It is finished because of Jesus. May we be a picture of the finished work of Jesus in the lives of people around us. God, thank you for the prayers being lifted up for those around us that maybe we just often walk by, but we should just pause and slow down long enough to see how you're at work among us. We love you in Jesus' name. Many continue to pray. I wanna lead us into our next focus. And this one, we're gonna give you an opportunity to be prayed for, as well as pray for others. So I wanna ask members of our prayer partner ministry, you can be seated, you can remain standing either way, but I wanna ask our prayer partners to begin moving at this moment. We've got 271 prayer partners at Midway Church. Isn't that awesome? They pray for every need that comes our way. Give God some praise for them. Thank them for their service. I'm gonna ask them just to spread out around the room, need some up here in the front, you can be in the back. Here's how you'll know, and also I wanna ask any of our LAT, our leadership advisory team, finance team, staff, pastors, who are willing to pray over someone, any of our church leaders to come now and join them. Across the front, the back, along the sides, in the gym, we're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna stand along the sides and the back, we're gonna spread out. Here's how you can know if they're willing to pray for you, if they're looking at you right now, if they're facing you, they're saying, I would love to pray for you right now. And as we begin to sing, or as I set this up in a moment, you can go do one of two things. You can pray. We're going to pray for families. We're going to pray for 
the brokenness, the healing that is needed, the restoration, the peacemaking that is needed. We're gonna pray for healed marriages, restored relationships, for fathers, for mothers, for step-parents, for grandparents, for foster care and adoption, for widows, for orphans, for those who influence all of the next generation in our lives, for God's definitions of the family that are under such attack today, for marriage, for physical healings, for depression, for anxiety, for spiritual oppression, for grief, Many of you have lost loved ones. I've done funerals over the Christmas holiday and there's pain in that. And so if you wanna be prayed for in those areas or others, as soon as I prompt us in a moment, come and see one of the people that are around you online. We see you too. Many of our prayer partners are online and they're in the chat right now. And you can chat with them in the chat of whatever platform you're using right now today. You can also just pray for these needs. Pray for the people asking for prayer. You can also, maybe today's the day as we prayed for the lost a moment ago, maybe you realize that's me. You realize I need to trust Jesus as Lord, Master, and Savior. If you're watching online, there's a link in the description of this video that has the same connect card that's in the rooms right now that we're at in person. In the rooms, there are cards on the gym tables out there. They're scattered around. They're in the seat backs around you if you're in the house here. If you need to make a decision to follow Jesus, you wanna be baptized, you wanna find a life group? You wanna find somewhere to serve? You know God's called you to Midway Church? Fill out that card during this moment and take it to one of these people that you see or fill it out online if you've made a decision or click that link that you find there and we wanna walk on this journey with you. So you can make a decision, have prayer prayed over you. You can pray over all these needs, but let's pray for the family together today. I'm, there's so much brokenness. And maybe you brought a lot of that with you. So you'll see the prayer prompts on the screen to pray for marriages, parenting, relationships, healing, restoration, peacemaking. We've got a peacemakers conference that's going to be here at Midway because there's so much conflict, depression, anxiety, spiritual attack, forgiveness, unity. Maybe you need to make things right with somebody, starting with Jesus, but then moving to other people. As we begin to pray right now, will you come? Will you make your decisions? Will you be prayed for? Or will you just pray for these needs? God, we pray right now as I kick us off. As I say amen, we begin to pray. The band's gonna come and begin our song. And may we not wait another moment. May we come forward, be prayed for. Also pray for these needs. We ask it in Jesus' name. Let's pray. And will you come right now?
Others, I hear voices being lifted to you in this moment. We welcome it to continue. God, you welcome the prayers of your people. Lord, we're thankful for the families represented, for God, the family of Midway Church that's represented here, the global church family we get to be a part of and pray for. We lift up all of the broken, all of the reconciliation, all of the peacemaking that needs to happen, Lord, amongst these families. Lord, all the pain that they carry, that you would meet them there. Lord, thank you for our church leaders who are praying over them in these moments. God, we lift it all up to you. We thank you. Lord, as I keep us moving, we in no way quench how you're moving in these prayers. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. As everybody continues to pray, I'm gonna move us to a next focus. You feel free to continue right where you're at. But I wanna ask, if you will, be seated if you're in the seats for just a moment so you can see something. I wanna pray next for the next generation. And before you think I'm leaving out the generations that have gone before, hold on just a minute. I wanna ask any of the kids, if you're elementary age or younger, and our prayer partners, you're welcome to spread on out and stay as as you move forward. You can move back to your seats as you're finished there. They're available to you. You're welcome to come to them anytime. But if you're elementary age or younger, would you just stand up right where you're at? Don't come here or anything. Just stand up in your seat and stay standing for a minute. Elementary and down. Kids in the room, stand up for just a moment and stay standing or lift them up. Yeah, let's thank God for them. Stay standing. Look at the babies being held up. I love it. I love it. Do the same thing in the gym, wherever you're at. We want everybody to see this. Now, if you're in middle school, will you stand up and join the elementary kids? Elementary kids, stand up. Stay standing. Yeah, middle schoolers, join them. Everybody stay standing for a moment. Where are my high schoolers? Everybody else stay standing too. High schoolers, join them. Stand up. Elementary, kids, preschool, middle school, high school, all stay standing. Now, where are my young adults? We got a young adult ministry for after high school all the way to age 30. Will you join them? Everybody stay standing. Yeah. Look at the young adult standing church. 
We're gonna pray for our next generation. But listen, my friends, don't you think for a second, if you're seated, stay standing for a moment. If you're seated right now, don't think for a second that God's done with you, that God doesn't see you, that your church doesn't need you. I want you to look around and see a very tangible picture of why our church needs you. If you're not standing, like me, I'm just standing because I'm talking. I'd be sitting right there with you. That means we're called to invest in the next generation. So if you're seated, I pray over you, but I want us to pray over those standing. Those who are standing, look at me for just a moment. Even if I can't see you, I want you to know that we see you, that God sees you, that I believe I'm gonna proclaim in Jesus' name that many of the kids who are standing in this moment, these high schoolers, middle schoolers, kids and young adults, they're gonna be pastors. They're gonna be church leaders. They're gonna be missionaries. They're gonna be world changers for Jesus, not just in the future, but right now. They are the church of today. We see you if you're standing. And if nobody has told you lately, your church believes in you. We believe in you. I don't know what people are telling you, but I know God wants you to know that we believe in you, that He believes in you. And I'm gonna ask the band to come up and as I say amen after praying over you, we're gonna kick into a song and give you a chance to pray for the next generation. And as I say amen, you can then have a seat if you want or you can all join and stand with them. But God, I pray over this group that's standing up. Those that I can see, those that I can't see, And even those who are sitting down right now, as we all pour into and invest in the next generation, God, I pray they would know how much you believe in them. They're not the church of the future. They're the church of right now as they go into their schools. And so God, as we stop to pray for our mission to unite all generations, to go make disciples of Jesus, some of the prayer focuses on the screen will include kids, youth, and young adult camps and retreats and ministry events. We wanna pray over our schools, public, schools, private schools, homeschool, mentorship across all generations, discovery of callings and equipping in the church over these that are standing right now. And may those of us who are seated be the ones to pour into them. God, may all generations be united to go make disciples. So guys, we pause to pray for the next generation. We do so in a united way with all generations coming together. We pray the blessing that your favor would go before us over our church body, that we come together in unity as we pray for the next generation. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Will you continue? You can stand if you like. You can be seated if you like. But as the band comes to sing, let's pray for the next generation. Listen, if we don't make disciples of the next generation, the world will. But we stand for the truth and we pour into the next generation. And right now we pray for them. Will you join me? Let's pray.
your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family and your children and their children and their children. we pray over the next generation and all generations that we be united to make disciples. Lord, what a beautiful sight for the little ones to be prayed over in our church today. God, we thank you for their lives. You created them, you knew them, and you knew their purpose before you formed them in their mother's womb. And with all our heart, we pray over our children and over the youth and over these leaders who are and will be long after some of us are gone. May we plant into their lives in a powerful way. God, we praise you, we thank you. I wanna set up our last prayer prompt today and that's prayer for our church and the world. I'm gonna call this prayer for the reach. This is what we're looking at for the next three months as a church. In the world, there's so much going on. There's so much hurt, there's so much pain. And today, church, I want you to hear this loud and clear. We've got plenty of talent, plenty of buildings, plenty of people, plenty of budgets, plenty of blessings to steward, but we have nothing if we don't have the hand of God on our church. And that's what I want us to pray for for 2024 and beyond is that God's hand would be on our church. So pray for our church and the world. Pray for Israel. Pray for the conflict in the Middle East. I just learned that over Christmas in Nigeria, hundreds of people killed, slaughtered, Christians murdered. Pray for our brothers and sisters who are hurting around the world, for the persecuted church. We get to be here and do this freely. There are people who fear for their lives. Let's pray for our brothers and our sisters. Let's pray that God would break our heart for what breaks his heart. Let's lift up the hurting around the world. Let's pray for our government our president, the election coming up. Let's pray for church unity in the midst of all of that because the enemy wants to steal, kill, devour, destroy, and divide God's church so that we have no voice in divided times. So let's show a divided world what a unified church can look like. That's our prayer. Let's pray for our life groups and our life group leaders. Let's pray for our pastors. Let's pray for our staff, for our leadership advisory team, for our finance team. Let's pray for our building expansion teams. They explore how we make more room for all the amazing people God is bringing our way. For our volunteer ministry leaders, for all of our ministries as a church, Lifeline that reaches out as the hands and feet of Jesus, all the ministries that make up Midway Church, for our local and global mission partners and missionaries all around the world. Let's pray for our 2024 outreach efforts and events and conferences that are coming up that are gonna be a light to a dark, dark world. Let's pray for our world. Let's pray for our church. Let's pray more than anything for God's hand to be 
something that empowers us in such a way that we've never seen before in 2024. So let's pray for those things as we sing how great our Lord is and we lift up his name. Let's remember that he is able, but let's be intentional to plant and to sow into this right now as we pray for these things. God, we ask that your hand be on our church as we begin to sing and people begin to pray for the reach. We know we have nothing if we don't have your hand on our church. We love you. We dedicate this time just to pray that you would go before us, go with us. And God, we, we're planting and sowing in our own spiritual journey so that we can play our role in how you want to reach the world for the name of Jesus. Let's pray together right now.
God, it is your breath. Give him some praise. We praise you. We know it's only your breath in our lungs that gives us life, that gives us hope, that gives us meaning, that gives us purpose, that keeps us on mission. So God, in a world that has so many distractions, help us as your church to stay on mission, to go make disciples, who make disciples, who make disciples. We pray for our broken, hurting world, Lord that we would be a picture of love in the midst of a lot of hate, that we would be a picture of unity in the midst of all kinds of anger and division, that we would be a picture of compassion and grace in the midst of a lot of hatefulness, that we would be a picture of your truth in a world that is so confused. God, for all the little ones, the big ones, the young ones, the old ones, for all of us as we play our role in the body of Christ. God, we pray that you would carry us, that as we do our part, we know you're faithful to do yours. Lord, in this day of planting and prayer, we pray that we would reap what is sown hundredfold, a millionfold, way beyond our own lives and generations. May we be the kind of shoulders today that others can stand on tomorrow. We love you. We thank you that we get to be the church in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Well, as you remain standing today, church, we want to give you this time of planting and sowing as we believe God for a big harvest. Now it's time for you to go, to be intentional. This is not just a moment that we leave here. I believe it's a moment you'll continue in your own journey, in your own life, as you are intentional with how you go into a new year. God's gonna do amazing things through the good times and the bad times. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We believe in you and we're excited about a new year and we invite you into Midway Church and to the family. I've got a couple of things I wanna tell you before I dismiss you here as we head out. First of all, I just gotta tell you something from my heart. Pastor Todd taught me a long time ago to reflect at this time of the year and to write things down, things I'm thankful for, goals I wanna set, whether it be physically, financially, spiritually, in all areas of my life. And I look back and I looked at last year in December of 2022, I wrote two specific things down that I prayed all year and asked God for at Midway Church, that God would give us the largest Easter in our history. And guess what, church, that happened. I also prayed specifically, I wrote it down. I prayed that the Lord would bless us with the largest Jesus birthday offering in our church's history. And I specifically wrote down over a million dollars. And God did that through us, church. Those are numbers and you say, well, you know, God doesn't always do that. And I would say, there's a lot of other things I wrote down that I didn't accomplish, that God didn't do the way that I wish he would have done. Some he did, some he did exceedingly abundantly above, but I know God's at work and I know he wants to work in you. So let's go out, let's be intentional, let's plant and let's sow and let's watch God bring the harvest this year. A couple of quick things for you. I wanna remind you of life enhancement classes. Now these are things for like grief share. If you're in pain, if we prayed over you a moment ago, it's very likely we have a life enhancement class that meets you right where you're at, walking with an addict. Somebody who, how do I love a family member, a friend who is an addict? We have uh, recovery classes, all kinds of those. We got lists of those around our campus. Those launch in just a week or so on January the 10th. And so you don't wanna miss those. And then also the reach starts on Sunday. We're going through the book of Acts. Read ahead, we'll be in that. We're doing a chapter a week for 12 weeks. Acts chapter one will be January the 7th as we talk about the reach. Invite somebody, reach out to the, maybe that name you thought of and let's bring them into the family of God. God will use you. A simple invitation can go a long way. Listen, if you fill out a connect card, leaders, if you have those, if you're in the gym, you can drop them off with one of the leaders at the door there. If you have a connect card in here, there'll be people to my left, your right, or you can also just go over to the connection desk in our atrium. If you either were given a card or if you wanna fill one out, we wanna know how God's working in you. I wanna read this over you as we're dismissed today, church. This is my prayer over us. Numbers chapter six, verse 24 says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in peace, my friends. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. You're dismissed.